Right. Uh, we are going live on YouTube. Uh, oh, so really? I invite everyone to, um, while you're wishing everyone Shana Tova, to, uh, to keep the, the personal um, private wishes to the chat um, as, we, as we begin. So should so I go to YouTube? All of oh, you. started. Oh, I thought they said we're, they're going live. We should mute. Everybody's going to get muted as we start to stream. Okay, good. Okay. What's that white thing? It says... You, this meeting is being live streamed by anyone with access to live stream can watch. Oh, um, got it. Okay. Can you mute us, Rabbi? Yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only person who can. Will he? I can and I will. <laughs> Shana Tova, everyone. Welcome. It is so wonderful to see so many of you come and join us tonight. Um, we are celebrating Rosh Hashanah, welcoming the sweet new year in a way that is pretty different from the tradition, although uh, from the days when, when, you, when we were raising little children, one learns that once you've done something three times, it becomes a routine. So we are still in the safeties uh, of, of just doing this for the second time. Uh, but I know that last year, so many of you found the Rosh Hashanah Seder a really meaningful and wonderful addition to the list of uh, things that we do to celebrate Rosh Hashanah. And so we continue to be creative. I am uh, really grateful uh, to Alan and Robin and Melissa, our three uh, tech, uh, tech personnel who are behind the scenes making sure that people can come in and, uh, and be here. If you have any questions during the, uh, the evening, if something is not fully working, I may not see your texts. Uh, so if you are trying to communicate something, please uh, put it into a chat to Melissa, um, Alan or Robin, and they will be delighted to try and help. And welcome to all of you. I am so excited to have Laurel and Anna uh, coming to us from their studio with beautiful greenery behind them. Um, and, and while this has been and continues to be a challenging way to celebrate, it also gives us an unbelievable opportunity. We get to invite each other into our homes and none of our homes can fit all of us at the same time, but what a beautiful way for us to share our tables and our moments of celebration with each other. We will proceed with our Seder. Uh, I hope that some of you I know were interested in, uh, in the list of things. And so we included a, an article where you could uh, look up the list of things. If you don't have certain things on your table, that's quite all right. Uh, the idea is we talk about symbolism. We use these foods on the table. I'm so grateful to Olga for making sure that we had all of these symbolic things. Uh, including my favorite, uh, the leek. I'm not going to eat it tonight, but I do have it on the table. Um, and so welcome. And we are, whether you are on Zoom, uh, whether you are watching us on YouTube, whether you are with us in this moment live, or you had to catch up uh, a little time later, um, we are really excited to celebrate this Shana Tova with all of you. And with that, we are ready to begin our Seder. Um. Can everyone see the, the shared? Um. Can everyone see the pomegranate? Yeah, very good, excellent. <laughs>
melody is known as Nikum Futishrei, as we welcome this new month, this new year. The idea of a Seder for Rosh Hashanah comes from the Sephardi side of the Jewish family. And um, the Sephardim, of course, coming from the name Sfarad, the name for Spain in Hebrew. Um, but it describes the, the Jews who have ended up in Spain and Portugal and, um, and beyond. So um, there are, of course, now it, it's just a matter of the country of origin or countries of origin, but Sephardi Jews have had this tradition of a Seder welcoming Rosh Hashanah with a special meal with special symbolic foods and that's what we are doing here tonight. Uh, and since we're doing this Sephardi style, let us uh, once again practice, we learned it last year, the Sephardi greeting for Rosh Hashanah. Tisku l'shanim rabot. May you marry it many years and the response is Tisku v'tiyu May you merit a long life. So, Tisku Shanim Rabot. Tisku Shana Obirchoteha. Let the new year begin with all of its blessings. And the first blessing, I know, I see one of my most, I, I so look forward to this, seeing all of your candles. Uh, so, so many of you have your candles prepared. We're going to uh, turn to Olga, who's going to lead us in lighting the candles. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu Bemitzvotav Veetzivanu Lehad Likner Shel Yom Tov Baruch Atah Source of blessing, eternal our God, you fill the universe with majestic might, giving us life, uphold the life within us, and bringing us to this special time when we get to celebrate the arrival of the new year with a beautiful table, with a beautiful community. Even though we can't be in the room together, how amazingly beautiful and special it is to see all of you tonight and to light these festival candles together. Now we turn to Anna and Laurel. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Borei Puri Agafen. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Olam, Baruch Amanu Mikol Ashon, Vekidish Tanu Bamitzvotav, Vatitain Lanu Adonai Lohinu Baba. Change the slide, please. Thank there you. Vatitain <laughs> Lanu Adonai Lohinu Baba, Et Yomazikaron Hazeh, 
Yom Trua Mikra Kodesh, Zecher Litziat Mitzrayim, Kivanu Vaharta, Beotanu Kidashta Mikohamim, Udvar Chaimet Vikayam Lad, Baruch Adonai, Melech HaKol HaOretz, Mekadesh Yisrael, V'yom HaZikaron, Baruch HaTadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Shehechianu, Lekiyamanu, Lehiyanu, Lazman Hazem. L'chaim. And of course, as our Seder unfolds, uh, in addition to the blessings that appear on the screen and description of foods, uh, there are also these questions that are sprinkled around. And so uh, most of the places there are in red. And so uh, perhaps if, you're, if you see them, uh, spend a few moments pondering the questions that, that it raises for all of us. And perhaps either in real time or later today, share them with people that you're sharing your meal with. Um, and I, I hope that this give, gives an additional meaningful uh, moment to celebration. And so we are ready to begin our Seder. The first food uh, on our list is the date. Now, um, I, I do have the traditional dates um, here, and um, I, I like the dates very much. But this year, Olga brought home something new. And um, some of you may have tried this before. I've never tried these. These are fresh dates. Raw dates. Raw dates. Um, we, had to, we had to go on YouTube and find out how you eat them. And apparently, you just eat them. So we will uh, we'll see. I'll report afterwards uh, what experience this was. But the Hebrew word for date, tamar, reminds us of the Hebrew word yitam'u, which means to put an end to something. We strive to put an end to the pandemic which afflicts our world. Tonight we pray for the strength and wisdom to become partners with God in that sacred mission. We know that there will be a date when we can once again be together, physically as well as spiritually. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Bore peri ha ha etz. Um, blessed are you, Adonai, our God, uh, who brings forth the fruit of uh, the tree. Yehi ratzon milfanecha, Adonai Eloheinu ve'elohei avoteinu ve'imoteinu she'yitam'u soneinu ve'oyeveinu. May it be your will, Adonai, our God and God of our ancestors, that we will rise up victorious and whole over our enemies, both visible and invisible. And if you have a date, um, go ahead and we eat it now. With that one. Mm. Well, now it's a moment of silence while I'm enjoying the date. Now, the next thing on our table is a um, head of a fish. Um, and we want to use our heads. Morally and spiritually, we want to be at the head of the line. We want to lead and not merely follow. The Jewish people have been a people of leaders, innovators, innovators and creative thinkers let us put our qualities of leadership to work for the good of all people. We think of those who have been the stragglers, those who have not been able to keep up, physically and economically, those who are weak, those who are vulnerable. In the coming year, let us commit ourselves to keeping pace with them as well. Yehi ratzon milfanecha, Adonai Eloheinu ve'elohei avoteinu ve'imoteinu, shiniye l'rosh ve'lo l'zanav, may it be your will, Adonai our God and God of our ancestors that we will be like the head and not the tail. And so whether it's gefilte fish uh, or whether it's, uh, it's a head of the fish or, or not, um, the symbolism of it is very clear for Rosh Hashanah. And now we are going back to Laurel and Anna as we continue our journey through welcoming the new year. You start. 
One of the most well-known symbols that shows up in Judaism on so many uh, occasions, so many levels, is the pomegranate. The Hebrew word for pomegranate is rimon. It is also the word for the ornaments on the handles of the Torah scroll, rimonim. We pray for the day when we will be able to once again encounter the Torah scroll back in our sanctuary. They say that a pomegranate has 613 seeds in it, representing the number of mitzvot in the Torah. On this night of beginnings, may we aspire to encounter numerous opportunities for mitzvot in the coming year. Yehi ratzon milfanecha, Adonai Eloheinu ve'elohe avoteinu ve'imoteinu, shetarbez choyoteinu kerimon. May it be your will, Adonai our God and God of our ancestors, that we will be full of good deeds, just as the pomegranate is filled with seeds. And let us say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Obvious battling with the pomegranate here. <clears throat> and as I look around um, our room, as I look around our Zoom, I see so many of you who have engaged in planting all kinds of seeds of goodness in this past year. From those who were our honeybees just a couple of days ago, delivering honey wishes and greetings to all of you. To those who were helping to move in, our sixth refugee family that we're helping, and so on and so forth. So many big and small deeds that people continue to engage, sowing those seeds of goodness for us and for our community and for the world around us. So, kola kavod to all of you. Now, the string beans. Um, the word for string bean is rubia, which is similar to the Hebrew word yirabu, uh, which means to increase or to be abundant. Um, if only we could say that abundance has been the gift to all God's children. Yet we acknowledge those who have encountered their own professional fragility, those in economic distress, those who face personal uncertainty. May the goodness in their lives increase and may they find abundant hope. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Pri HaAdama. And the special um, blessing for, uh, for the string beans, Yehi Ratzon Milfanecha, Adonai Eloheinu Velohe Avoteinu Vimoteinu, Shirbu Zchoyoteinu. May it be your will, Adonai our God and God of our ancestors, that our merits will increase. So if you have the string beans on your on your table, go ahead, have some now. Or oh, don't. Mm. A 
Talmudic story that takes place in Roman times tells about the sage, Rabbi Meir, who lived in a violent neighborhood. He was often the victim of harassment and physical violence. He prayed for his tormentors to die. And his wife, Beruria, had deep heart wisdom. Do not pray that the evil ones should die. Pray rather that evil itself will die. The Hebrew word for the leak is karti. It resembles the Hebrew word karet, which means to cut off. Let us pray not that the people should be cut off from the world, but that evil deeds themselves be cut off. Yehi ratzon milfanecha, Adonai Eloheinu ve'elohe avoteinu ve'imoteinu, shei karatu soneinu. May be your will, Adonai our God and God of our ancestors, that we can cut off hatred from the world. And now uh, the next uh, the next part, uh, part on our table is uh, beets. And actually, one of uh, Olga's family traditions uh, was a mother's recipe is to prepare uh, fish carp usually uh, with with some beets. Um, I have never seen it growing up, but it does create this um, darker color uh, of the fish. So our fish head also has the beets underneath it. The Hebrew word for beet is selek, It reminds us of the word yistalku, which means to retreat. We think of Jonah, the last story that we will tell during these high holidays. He tried to escape from his life mission and from God. From what do we retreat? From our own higher sense of ourselves? From the pain of the world? From the opportunities to be fully present in our loved ones, for our loved ones? But perhaps, too, there are other things from which we would want to retreat. We want to retreat from the anxiety that has been the common lot of all humanity. We want to retreat from our bitterness and our cynicism. For those of us who have been prisoners within the walls of our homes, let us retreat from that solitude and fully enter the world again. She stalku oiveinu umastineinu. May it be a will out on our God and God of our ancestors that we leave behind all things that hold us back. Zopreinu lachaim Melech hafet bachaim Vachot beinu now, I'm not sure whether this is actually a gourd, um, but it's supposed to be... Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, apparently, I don't know whether it's a gourd, but it's definitely entertaining to my children. So, so, so there we have it. Um, the Talmud calls the gourd kara, which also means to tear. We remember those whose, uh, whom death has torn from us. The torn ribbon, symbolizing our losses, the tearing of existence itself. Yehi ratzon milfanecha Adonai Eloheinu ve'elohe avoteinu ve'imoteinu. Shetikra ro'a gazer dineinu. May it be your will, Adonai our God and God of our ancestors, that pain and suffering be torn up and that our merits will be proclaimed before us as we walk through the world. And now we come to the part that is finally sweetness. Um, on, on our table is the lovely honey that has arrived with our honey bee um, just the other day. Uh, and I hope that you have some of that honey too. We long for that sweetness of life, to hold each other again in our arms as well as in our souls. In a world filled with vitriol, polarization and anger, let us be the ones who bring a renewed sense of sweetness to the world. Yehi ratzon milfanecha, Adonai Eloheinu ve'elohe avoteinu ve'imoteinu, she'techadesh aleinu shana tova u'metuka, may be your will, Adonai our God and God of our ancestors, 
that you renew for us a year that is good and sweet. And, oh, so if you have an apple and a honey, Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam bore pri haetz. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, who produces this wonderful, slightly sour fruit of the tree that we can combine with the sweetness of honey. And now, last but not least, this special food, a round collar on our table. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Hamotzi lechem min haaretz Amen. And of course the traditional Rosh Hashanah is instead of eating challah with a little bit of a salt, which we do on Shabbat, we dip challah into honey. And so if you have some challah, some honey, please go ahead and enjoy that sweet um, taste. Now, I want to take a few seconds and share with you a little inspiration for tonight. Uh, we are starting the new year, 5,782. And if you look carefully at the bottom of the number, there is a way the year is spelled in Hebrew. Tafshin pei bet. So in case you didn't know this, the tradition is to spell the year with Hebrew letters. Now, they, to be entirely honest, so Taf is 400, Shin is 300, uh, Pei is 80, and Bet, of course, stands for two. Every Hebrew letter has a, a certain numerical equivalency, and so there's a way to create this. Now, of course, you will notice that 5,000 is missing from that number, but since the thousand changes only once in a very long time, uh, the, the common custom is just to write those four, uh, the four letters uh, as, we, as we go through the year. So, a little, uh, a little midrash for you. The Tafshin Pei Bet, 5,782. One of the things that we've learned from our ancestors is when we look at words, um, then rabbis would engage in this creative, those, those who were in the Mishnah class a few years ago, you will remember, that they will often say, don't read it as this, but instead read it as that. P being playful with the letters. And so um, perhaps you'll forgive me for a, a little homily here. So the, uh, the suggestion is don't read Tafshin Pei Bet in 5782, but swap the letters around and read it as Tafshin Bet Pei, which also stand, um, is a, an abbreviation, an acronym, for Torah Sheba Al Peh. Torah Sheba Al Peh is the term which describes the oral Torah. As you remember, if you remember the Midrash, Moses goes up onto Mount Sinai and for 40 days he's writing down the Torah that God has given him, but then for 40 nights he is uh, imbibing the oral Torah, all of the traditions, all of the, the customs which make the Jewish experience what it is. Whether you are a strong believer in Torah Shebaal Peh coming Misinai, that every single uh, custom, law and minhag, every interpretation, the Mishnah, the Talmud, whether all of it word for word came from God on Mount Sinai, or whether you accept this as a mythology of our people, that whichever way it is, the important thing here is Torah Shebaal Peh means oral law, but we can also read it as Torah, which is on our lips. May 5,782 be the year when the Torah will commonly be found on our lips, when we will engage in learning of our tradition and with following the mitzvot um, in our lives and sharing it with those around us. So, Shana Tova to all of you, happy and sweet 5,782. And now, a, a few blessings. Please join me, and uh, I know you, you guys are at home, so we remain muted, but let's join together. Our God and God of all generations before us, may it be your will in the coming year to grant us a year of abundance and atonement, a year of blessings bestowed and received, a year of community and compassion, a year of delight and exaltation, a year of enlightenment, 
a year of friendship and forgiveness, a year of going up in gladness to the land of Israel, a year of health and healing and humor, a year of inner strength and well-being, a year of joy and Jewish celebration, a year of knowledge and learning for its own sake, a year of love between parents and children, friends and spouses, brothers and sisters, a year of mitzvot and moments of sweetness, a year of nature protected and enjoyed, a year of optimism and hope, a year of peace pursued with perseverance, a year of quiet and tranquility, a year of rain in its seasons, a year of song and spiritual growth, a year of Torah study and tikkun olam, a year of understanding and unity, a year of vows fulfilled and violence overcome, a year of wisdom acquired and shared, a year of coexistence among the families of the earth, a year of young and old reaching out to one another, a year of Zion aglow with light for us and all the world. Our God and God of the generations before us, grant us a year of gratitude to you, for the, the most, most profound, profound of blessings, your gift of life. Yehi ratzon milfanecha, Adonai Eloheinu ve Elohei avoteinu ve imuteinu, shetechadesh aleinu shana tova umetuka. Our God and God of our ancestors, eternal God of all generations, may your presence in our lives this new year renew our spirits and renew our strength. May it be a good year, may it be a sweet year. Leshana tova tikatevu, Leshana tova tikatevu, Leshana tova, Leshana tova. Our Seder concludes as together we proclaim the beginning of the Jewish New Year. Our God and God of our ancestors, may we know your blessings in the year 5,782. Eternal One, bless us and the whole house of Israel with renewed life, happiness and peace, comfort and courage, resilience and strength. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Now, uh, we're going to try and do this. Uh, Tkia or somebody. Tkia. Let's see if I can do this. This is Samuel's show far. Shana Tova. Okay, so uh, we are going to switch now into the gallery view. Shana Tova to all of you. Uh, we will say goodbye in a moment. Um, I'm going to end our transmission onto YouTube and I invite you to stay behind. We'll, uh, we'll invite people into breakout rooms so that you can wish each other Shana Tova. Uh, some of you may, may want to actually, especially if you're home alone, you may want to share the meal with others in, in your little breakout room. Uh, and to all of you, we look forward, Laurel and Anna and I look forward very much to seeing your faces uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, our service will begin at 10 o'clock and tomorrow afternoon we are going to uh, come together for a Tashlich outside at four o'clock at the Wrights uh, Pond in Orange. And um, maybe you have experienced the second day of Shoshana, maybe you haven't done so before, but uh, since it tends to be a smaller gathering, we're going to try whether hopefully we'll cooperate. We're watching it closely. We'll, we'll look forward to trying to come together outside for our second day of Rosh Hashanah service. But for tonight, 